In August 2016, I was fortunate enough to be in Seattle, where I visited the Living Computer Museum. This was founded by Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft. Paul's team have recently undertaken the restoration of two Xerox Altos. They were famously designed at the Xerox Park Research Facility in California. The Alto was designed in the early 1970s and several thousand units were built throughout the 70s. Famously, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates visited Park and were blown away by some of the research happening there, including the graphical user interface and the use of a mouse which the Alto featured. The Alto could also be networked via Ethernet and there was a large network of Altos at the facility. You can't see it in my picture here, but underneath the table is a big metal box that housed the power supply and a disk drive. On the right of my picture you can see several disks, which typically held 2.5 megabytes of data each. You can see a three-button mouse as well. Notice as well that the screen is a portrait orientation, perfect for resembling a piece of paper on its bitmap display. In my picture the Alto is playing Maze War, an early networked first-person shooter. The team at the Living Computer Museum have created an Ethernet bridge so their emulator, Controlto, is able to talk to original machines at the museum. They had two Altos and two emulators connected together. Once I got home I downloaded the emulator to have a play as I was excited to learn more about the Alto. The emulator really is a fantastic bit of work by the team and as mentioned previously it supports Ethernet. I've already played around with networked maze war and I'm looking forward to trying network booting amongst other things. I started by playing some games as you do and I thought it would be fun to show how the Alto worked in this short video. I plan to make more short videos after this one to show a range of programs that were made for the Alto. To start with, firstly you need to insert a disk into the emulator. You do that from the system menu at the top. Select Drive 0 and select a disk pack. Once that is done, you can start the emulator from the same menu. On a real Alto, you would press a black button behind the keyboard to start it. What you see now is called the Alto Executive, a command line interface. Although many programs that you could run on an Alto did make use of the mouse and have a graphical user interface, the operating system is command driven. To display a list of files, type a question mark. If there's more than one page of files, pressing any key will display the next page. Wildcards can be used to display all runnable files. To run a program with the suffix run, simply type the name of the program. Invaders was written towards the end of the 1970s and can be controlled using the mouse. Left and right buttons to move, middle button to shoot, which for most people will be pressing down on the scroll wheel. In the case of Invaders, Escape will quit the game, but for most other programs, Shift and F3 will abort back to the executive. You can also reset the emulator from the system menu to get back if you need to. Some program names end with .boot rather than .run. To execute these files, type the boot from command followed by the full name of the program you want to run, in this case asteroids.boot. It's also worth noting that the executive is not case sensitive. Capitalization is used for readability. Asteroids can also be controlled by either the keyboard, mouse or a combination of both. The left and right buttons rotate your ship and the middle button is shoot. Spacebar is hyperspace. The return key is also fire, which I prefer to use to the middle mouse button. The tilde key, which on my keyboard is to the immediate left of the return key, acts as thrust. Left control and A can also be used to rotate your ship. Thanks for watching this short video. I'll be back very soon with some more videos looking at some more of the software that's available for the Alto.